right, so you're going to give a lightning talk about? LXC, um, an application called Docker IO that uh, abstracts over LXC and you know, does Linux containers in AUFS, which is a layered file system. We'll start the clock. Yeah. Awesome. I haven't started the clock. I'm like giving him extra time. So he's going to talk about <laughs> Docker and LXCs and your name? Anderson. Anderson. So this is super awesome because Anderson showed up. He had the uh, he, unfortunately for him, he like introduced himself to me and said, yeah, I've been working on some stuff with Docker. I said, dude, you totally got to sign up to do a lightning talk. Uh, and he was very unsure, but he did it. So um, that's awesome. Big round of applause for Anderson. <laughs> so I've got the, the rules of a lightning talk, or the rules of these lightning talks, are that you get five minutes, and then you're done. So share with us as much as you can in that time. I've got a timer here, and you tell me when you're ready, and I'm going to start the timer and get out of your way. Countdown? Go. Not the countdown. Okay. <laughs> Go. Um, so Docker I.O. basically abstracts over uh, Linux containers and AUFS, which is a layered file system, and that allows me to uh, have basically a virtualized system without actually having the overhead of a virtualized system. So um, here's an example. Right now I have... Can you bump up your phone? Uh, no. I think I can. Sorry. I know I have a bunch of images. Um, Pixlayer is a service that uh, my team works on. I work here at this over there. And it is based off of the uh, CentOS image. So if I just. By just doing this. By just doing this, I can enter the sense OS image, and now I'm in there, and it's as good as having like a vagrant shell or um, a virtual box instance, except there's no overhead, meaning I can use this exact same image to uh, this exact same image to run in production or on Jenkins for integration tests and stuff like that. Um, I'll show you. There. So um. That's just this is just to prove that I've grown into uh, different versions. So yeah, basically instead of having an OS, instead of having hardware and um, an OS and then virtual and then a kernel and then OS and virtualization of hardware on top of that, we're basically running the same um, kernel on both the Linux container uh, and on my normal hardware meaning there's no overhead in virtualizing the hardware. Um, if you want to see the... Uh, <clears throat> if you want to see the running um, applications, then um, you can just do Docker PS. And that is a particular application I've been running for a while. Um, so I'll show you what it's output so far. Yeah, so that's a really complicated application that I put within CentOS and ran for the last hour just to show you that um, just to show you that this particular application um, has been running oh, 30 minutes ago. So the cool thing is I can completely I can take snapshots of uh, the file system and I can take snapshots of a uh, of the whole state at any time I want to. Um, and I can also build my own images and distribute it. So here's an example of an image that I built for our internal application. And it's basically, I just said, start with CentOS. So there's a lineage for every image. An image starts in one state, and then you can make a new, you can make a snapshot of that and keep building on top using the layer file system. Basically, I'm just saying updated and soft, open JDK, put zero on Q, put our Jenkins uh, server um, in the SC host, and download our application. Um, this is pretty simple. Um, what else? What else? If you want another, uh, if you want, Another image is a public repository that you have access to. You can also set up your own private repository. And all you have to do is call pull, and you'll automatically get that uh, 
image. So let me show you an example. This is the line I called earlier to uh, spin up that application that I wrote and get an ID. And that ID is basically the ID that was shown in moments like that. Uh, sorry. So basically, I have 34 seconds left. Um, Docker is <laughs> Docker is awesome. It's probably the feature of deployment and um, development. Having these lightweight images makes it very easy to distribute them, test against them with Jenkins, and put them straight into production. So you have this replicatable uh, state. Um, that word replicatable state that is uh, easy to manage. And seven seconds left. Uh, um, that's it, basically. Any questions? <laughs> So <clears throat> how is this different than just securing into a mounted class that's roughly the same? Like, is there um, some like wrappers around that or something? It seems like you've got some extra like finesse there, but I don't see how it's functionally any different. Um, it ice well, the CHRU would just give you an isolated process. Mm -hmm. But would it give you isolated processes also? Uh, and this also next. No. Uh, yeah, it'll give you isolated yeah. processes. And also, that bump push. Um, start up a particular image. It also nats it and exposes it ports for the applications within that guest image and reveals it to the host. So, um, one more follow-up question. So you're running Ubuntu as the like host or whatever, even though it's not a VM. But I imagine it's not a problem using the Ubuntu kernel for most of this stuff. But I imagine for testing stuff, you might run into problems having the kernel of the host OS be significantly different than what one of these test environments things it should have for the kernel. Like, I, I can't think of a specific situation, but I'm sure there are corner cases. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Um, as long as it's a, a relatively recent version of the kernel, I think 3.8 or, or later, then um, it only, I don't think there should be any conflict, but I'm not completely sure. I just started using this last week during a hackathon, so I'm not, and I'm not a DevOps person, like I said before, so. I might not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is the, is the, the network interface is virtualized once you're inside that environment? Do you know? Um, I believe so. Yeah? Yeah. So what happened? Have you had done the experiment with running a whole bunch on one box to see <laughs> how it operates with a shared network interface? I've only ran like two at the same time, so I'm not sure. That's a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you run this config or something see it? Does it look any different? Um, Never there we go. <laughs> That's the one. Okay. Cool. You guys just told me something. Else. Cool. Awesome. Uh, one thing I've heard about with LXC is that the guests may be able to do privilege escalation to those. Like, for example, if you do a reboot within the guest, that might affect the host. Yeah. There's, so one of the things that they said is it's not production ready because of security issues. So if you go to docker.io, you can see some information about those kind of security issues that they're trying to get past, but I don't, I don't know the details. Cool. All right. Well, well DevOps DC meets every other month, so you should come back in October and like give us a deep dive on Docker. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs>